everyone. What an unusual end to a very unusual year. I'm used to standing at the front of the nave of the Minster at this time of year, addressing you all about the achievements of the school before introducing the headmaster to give his address. Instead, I'm here at home, just as many of you will be, where we've all been for the last few months. I talked last year about the, the year being different, our new headmaster joining us just after Christmas. But little did we know how different this year would be. For half of the year, things went smoothly and according to plan. We began reviewing the school's curriculum. We opened the new dining hall at St Peter's 2 to 8, and we completed the new boathouse. We both started and finished the new multi-use games area, which incidentally has proved a great asset for managing our younger pupils over the last few weeks. Following these successful projects, we began the review for phase two of our campus master plan as part of a new draft strategic plan for the school. We had an expectation that by the end of this term, our new strategic plan would be completed and we would then be set fair in terms of our direction for the next five years and beyond. Then came COVID-19 and for a while, all normal activity stopped. The board, working with the headmaster and his senior team, concentrated on a plan to get the school through the crisis and successfully out of the other side. At the same time, the teaching staff put together a remote teaching programme, a programme that to this day still amazes me, both in terms of the speed with which it was produced and the quality of the finished product. There were a few weeks when we were worried about our financial situation. We are not a school that carries significant reserves, but rather one that invests any surplus in improvements for the future. Faced with school closure in March, things looked bleak, but there were two very significant things that happened to save us. Firstly, the immense efforts of the management team and all of the teaching staff who worked over the Easter holidays to pull together the programme for the summer term. Secondly, you, the parents who trusted us to continue with the education of your children and paid the reduced fees for the term. On behalf of all the governors, thank you for enabling us to move to the autumn term and onto the future of this great school with absolute confidence. As we come to the end of the year, we are losing one of our most respected governors, the Reverend Canon Dr. Christopher Collingwood. Chris has been a stalwart on our education committee and on our bursary committee. He's been able to bring all his years of experience working in schools to help guide our decisions. Chris also has supported our strong links with the Minster, where he's currently Canon Chancellor. Chris, thank you for all your contributions. We will miss you and we wish both you and Sue all the best for your retirement. Of course, our links with the Minster have always been strong, so we are proud to be able to support the Minster following their very sad decision to close the Minster School. I know their difficult decision was only made in the last three months and follows a significant loss of income they are suffering following the, pan the current pandemic crisis. So from September, we will be welcoming the Minster Choristers into St Peter's 8 to 13 school and we will then become the choir school of York Minster. This year for the first time the considerable efforts of the fifth form and the upper sixth form have not been able to be demonstrated through the examination system. This has, I know, been a considerable frustration for many students. Whilst any assessment can never be a full substitute for the rigour of examinations, I am sure that the extensive work that the headmaster and his team have undertaken will provide the next best thing. They have made every effort to ensure that the work of students throughout the whole of their GCSE and A-level courses is reflected in the predicted grades. 
These they have supplied to the Department of Education, who will determine the results this year. Despite the disappointment that scrapping the examinations has caused, I'm optimistic that these results will still reflect the hard work of everyone and produce a successful outcome for our pupils. We always recognise the sacrifices that parents make to send their children to the school. This year, of course, that sacrifice is even greater as we struggle with the financial implications of the pandemic and the shutdown imposed on many businesses. The school's finances have come under significant pressure and we now have debt to HMRC and a considerable loan facility. This is a new departure for the school as we have been operating without debt for many years. Nevertheless, we will not be raising our fees in September and they will remain at the same level as those charged last September. We are, however, putting plans in place to open the campus and I'm looking forward to welcoming all the pupils back in September. Subject, of course, to getting approval and final guidance from the government. Our success as one of the country's top schools is always only possible because of our committed and excellent teaching and support staff. This year, with all its extraordinary twists and turns and difficulties, is no exception. I would therefore, on behalf of the board, like to place on record our most sincere thanks to everyone who has contributed throughout the year. The difficulties and frustrations you have had to overcome and the quality of your response has made us all very proud. There are so many people who have worked so hard it's impossible to name you all, but I would like to mention just a few. The unstinting work of Andy Faulkner, Phil Hardy, Sarah Opie, Alistair Dunn, Rachel Johnson and Giles Roberts, who along with so many others have made such a difference. Of course, there is there's one person whose leadership, dedication and unbelievable appetite for hard work has got us through these extraordinary times. We are very lucky he is our headmaster. Jeremy, you have put in such a shift. It's always a real pleasure to work with you. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. All that remains to wish is to wish everyone a happy and a healthy summer. Stay safe and for school leavers, good luck for the future. And for those remaining, we look forward to fully opening the campus and seeing you all in September. So it's goodbye for now.